talking about a man whose life is about to bamboozle you. We're talking about the life of a musician who many people in Ghana refer to as Ghana Steve Wonder. My brother, my sister, he became visually impaired, what you call blind at the age of two. In fact, he was born Jabr Amada. Jabr Amada. Jabr Amada. Today, my brother, my sister, many Ghanaians know him as Onipanya. This is about Onipanya. Oh my God, have mercy. My brother, my sister, the man whose music you heard in the background. He was born in Kumasi in 1945. Circa 1945. We do not know exactly when he was born, but we do know he was born in 1945. So in history, we say Circa, just around 1945. His parents, my brother, my sister, were illiterate, so they did not record exactly when he was born. At the age of two, he went totally blind. He couldn't see anything. In fact, his parents saw him as, uh, in fact, a demonic child because he had become blind just at the age of two. Many people started talking about him. Oh, some evil spirits had fallen on him. Oh, this child is going to bring bad luck to the family. But the family was counseled. And everybody in the family got to understand that it was just due to a childhood disease that made him go totally blind. The six childhood killer diseases, my brother, my sister, diphtheria, diarrhea, measles, whooping cough, and the rest of them, my brother, my sister. One of those was responsible for the blindness of Onipanuya at the age of two in 1947. Now, when he became blind, he had to depend on people to do a lot of things for him. He grew up, my brother, my sister, not knowing the faces of his mother and his father. But he could identify the voices. Oh, at a very young age, he was able to develop a local kalimba. You know what the kalimba is? Now, the kalimba is a musical instrument. He was able to make it himself from sardine cans. Then later, he moved into using other objects in making this thing called the local kalimba. My brother, my sister, he had a very deep husky voice. And people would love to come and sit down and listen to him play and sing some of the folkloric songs in the area. He moved from town to town, all the way from Boku to Bolga, from Bolga all the way to Wale Wale, from Wale Wale to Tamale, from Tamale all the way to Sunyane, to, yeah, through Kintampo. My brother, my sister, he sang songs in Hausa and also in Dagbani. As you hear him right now singing a song in Dagbani, which he calls Dantima Katuma. To buy for me and to insult me later, I don't like it. Come down. Listen to him. Ah. This is 3FM. This is 3FM. This is 3FM.
voice was unique. He had a deep, husky, baritone voice, richer than coffee and tea. My brother, my sister, he moved from town to town and he sang from lorry station to trot trot station and people loved him. He also developed an art. He could just touch the number plate of a car and then by the sensitivity in his fingers, he could tell you the number of the car plate. My brother, my sister, then somewhere in the 1980s, he decided to move to Accra. But before then, he was in and out of Accra from 1960 for 20 solid years, going to and from Accra to some other parts of the country called Ghana, where he made some living by just playing his kalimba and also singing. Today, we are talking about Onipa Nuya, who became blind at the age of just two. Hear me now, brethren. Then in the 1980s, early 1980, at the lorry station one day he was singing, playing his kalimba with that deep voice. And there was Faisal Helwani of Bibini Music, sitting down and then listening to this man. Find me a photograph of Faisal Helwani, yeah? A photograph of Faisal Helwani so that my people can find out exactly and get to know who Faisal Helwani was. Now, he was Lebanese. He came into this country and became a Ghanaian from when his parents also arrived in this country, my brother, my sister. This was the father of Yasmin Helwani and Sami Helwani and many more. My brother, my sister, they made us proud by becoming part of us and accepting us the way we are. My brother, my sister, he saw Onipanuya playing his kalimba. And then he took interest in that, my brother, my sister. When he took interest in that, he decided that he would put Onipanuya's career on a formal platform. In fact, a more professional platform. He took him into the studio. And then he asked him to sing with a little bit of arrangement and courting. Onipanuya got on the professional platform and was able to record some of his hit albums right there in the studios of Bibini Music by the kind courtesy of Faisal Helwani. <laughs> Oh my God, have mercy. Let me go to those that I love. And let my lovers come to me. Love is not about money. Love is just a beating of the heart. The lyrics of this one coming from Onipanuya. And this is the photograph of Faisal Helwani. Oh, the legend. He was the one who discovered Onipanuya on the streets of Accra. 
and took him into the Bibini studios and recorded some of these wonderful songs we are hearing today. My brother, my sister. Hey, Onipa Nui's music became extremely popular. And at that time, there was also a ship that was then named Onipa Nui. It was a ship that went from place to place in Ghana, treating people of so many different diseases. My brother, my sister. And they used Onipa Nui's um, music as their signature tune wherever they went and all the documentaries on TV and radio. My brother, my sister, Onipa Nuya rose from... Uh, yes, they, he rose from uh, grass to grace. In fact, the Onipa Nuya ship was a medical ship that went from place to place treating different people. And many people in the days felt that the ship was named after Onipa Nuya. Many other people believed that the ship was even... Onipa Nui's ship, but in fact, it had nothing absolutely to do with Onipa Nui, the musician. It had everything to do with everybody who needed help. Now, Onipa Nui itself is Chi, which means the people's brother. My brother, my sister, Onipa Nui made it big. No two ways about that, but how did he make it big? He made it big, my brother, my sister, by just playing his kalimba, and singing along and making everybody happy. In 1990, his music had become extremely popular. That Faisal Elwani got so many calls from all over Europe for Onipa Nuya to embark on a European tour. And then they settled on France, that they were going to France to start the leg in the tour. Fire! Fire! Blast! This is 3FM. He had a unique way of singing and he had his own mannerisms. My brother, my sister, Onipanya arrived in France and the very first concert was a big hit. Oh my God. People loved the way he was flowing and people loved the style. People loved the texture of the voice. Even in France, they had to record him. My brother, my sister, he recorded many more songs by the kind courtesy of the great legendary Faisal Helwani of Bibini Music. My brother, my sister, had it not been this great legend, a legendary voice like that of Onipanuya would have gone wasted. My brother, my sister, Onipanuya be began to live big. Everything was nice. All of a sudden, full stop, Onipanuya fell ill. The doctors in Paris said it was food poisoning. Before we realized, Onipanuya was dead. Blah! 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 Blah!
from 1945 knew nothing but suffering and when he made it big the very first tour that he had the very first venue in paris he was gone no wonder he said my brother my sister now it came out in several rumors that came after the death of onipanuya that oh when onipanuya became big he wasn't responding to family anymore. When Onipanuyak became big, he refused to be involved in some of the things that he and family were involved in and started to see himself as a superstar. My brother, whether this was true or false, nobody deserves to take another man's life. Nobody deserves to be killed. Nobody deserves to have his life ended all because of some of these things. Oh God. Today, my brother, my sister, this is the life of the great Onipanuya who was born a Jabir Mamada. Onipanuya died in 1990 at the age of 45. He had suffered all his life. And when he just made it, when he was now recognized internationally and was beginning to reap the fruits of his labor, his life ended just like that. My brother, my sister. Oh. They will remember you only Panya. Papa Uni Yaminko. Papa Uni Yaminko. Papa Nawa Bre. Wa Bre, Wa Bre, Wa Bre. At the age of two, he was already blind. He moved from town to town, village to village, trying to secure some bread. He suffered. He took Faisal Alwani in 1980 to rescue him from poverty. He recorded a number of songs for Bibini music. He was invited to play in France. And then he will proceed to do some other European cities. 
But right after the concert in France, Onipanuya was taken ill. Oh, Onipanuya. Onipanuya, Damir Fadwe, what? Oh, Damir Fadwe. Onipanuya, Oni Yaminko, what? Onipanuya, Missou, Oni Yaminko. Oh, Uyaya. Onipanuya, bye bye, yo. Missy, bye bye, what? Missy, bye bye, Oni Yaminko. Oh, Onipanuya. He died at the age of 45 in 1990. Today we remember him and we say in the burden of knowledge. Now that you know, what would you do? Be an any or lay a mini about fair and Zunaka Gane, Mezaka, Yene, and Pabango Bokayen, Fifi, and Yanukaina, Wabana, and Weber, then Lele and Jima Singabe, Kunne, Lele and Jima Singabe. It's been the African History Class. <laughs> Papa mula ho meo, mama mula ho meo, au na ima vinye, panumbo nungpo. Yes, the African history class and Onipanya lives on. The